G'day boys and girls and welcome back to Max Power Cardboard Collectibles. Hope you're well, happy and living your best life as always. And I hope you are gearing up for a very merry festive season. That's right, the silly season is well upon us. Hope you started your Christmas shopping at least. There's still about a week to go. But uh, look, I thought I'd jump on pretty Chrissy and uh, have a little look at the next year's AFL season and just sort of try to work out where I see all these teams finishing. Uh, so I have set up a little tier list maker because who doesn't love a good list? Uh, and we'll get stuck into that very soon but before we do guys you know the drill downstairs in the description is where you'll find links to the insta and the ebay page make uh, the ebay store page make sure you get around and have a look at that um yeah so no card content today card season's pretty much done but uh thought i'd just check in with everybody pre-christmas and uh have a little bit of fun with this so uh you know the drill let's get it <laughs> Alright guys, so I have put this little tier list together over on the Tier List Maker website. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll quickly just run through how everything works. Uh, yes, side note, I did get all the old cool 90s logos for the one for the teams that actually had them. Um, but yeah, so look guys, top tier flag contenders. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, these teams have a genuine shot to win or at least make the last Saturday in September. Uh, right in the window. So yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, next up, we've got the finals or bus tier. Uh, these teams, uh, with where their list is at at the moment, should be making finals as an absolute minimum. And failure to do so will probably put some pressure on the club, on the coach, on the team in some way or another. Uh, next, we have the fighting for the eight tier. Uh, basically, these teams should be good enough if things go their way to finish in the bottom end of the eight. Uh, look, I'm assuming there'll be about five to six teams who will be battling it out for the six to eighth spot on the ladder. Uh, look, they won't all make it, but they are fighting for the eight and should be thereabouts come season end. Next, we have the nowhere men tier. And uh, these teams, as the name suggests, uh, just kind of nowhere you know they're they're not in full rebo rebuild mode down the bottom of the ladder and uh, not really on the improve enough to be fighting it out for the eight uh, look some will be on the way up some will be on the way down but really they're all just kind of nowhere you know um, anyways after that we're moving down to the wooden spoon contenders um pretty self-explanatory again like the top team these teams are like the top tier sorry these teams are a genuine chance to finish at the bottom of the ladder and be fighting it out for the number one pick come season's end. All right, so the first team we're going to look at today is the Adelaide Crows. That is right, the Crom. And uh, look, I think this one's pretty simple. I think it's finals or bust. I think uh, given the way that last year ended for them, where they technically made the finals, but, uh, you know, had a pretty bum call by the goal umpire, I think we can put them in finals or bust. Uh, they do have a very young and improving list, so I don't think there's too many excuses for Crows to not take the next step next year. Um, look, I actually think they could push top four if things go their way this year, but... Uh, uh, I don't think I can genuinely put them in a flag contenders tier at this point. Um, I am looking forward to seeing the improvement we can see from guys like Rochelle and Saligo and Rankin in his second year at the club. Uh, and also how they structure their uh, their ruck forward setup with Thrillthorpe, uh, Riley O'Brien, Tex, Fogarty, and then the small guys like Rochelle and Rankin as well. Um, I think they've got a beast of a midfield with your Leds, your Dawsons, even your Matt Crouch, and then throwing in a sprinkling of those young guys in there as well. You know, so look, I think they've got a pretty strong lineup. They got that young defender, Max Michelini. Um, you know, they, I think they're in a good spot. They did lose Tom Duday, but I think they're going to be all right, the Crows. So finals or bust for the Crows for me. Uh, the next one is also a pretty easy one. Uh, Brisbane Lions, flag contenders. No doubt. Uh, they've been consistently making finals for the last four years. Uh, came within a kick of the grand final this year. Um, they should absolutely be thereabouts again this year. Uh, the list is in great shape. Uh, and I think they'll be in the window for probably the next couple of years as well. Uh, there are some guys that are getting older. Uh, you know, your, your Zorkos, your Danahers, your Oscar McInerney's, Charlie Cameron, and Lockie Neal. All 30 plus next year. Uh, but with the youth they've got coming through, guys like Ashcroft, uh, Kitty Coleman, Dev Rod, uh, Jasper Fletcher's another one. Um, they've also brought in Tom Duday from the Crows. So, uh, you know, the Crows loss is the Brisbane Lions sort of gain there. Uh, and they've still got a lot of blokes in their prime. Your Dunkleys, your Harris Andrews, your Hipwoods, all these guys. So there's absolutely no reason for me why the Brisbane Lions will not be up there again next year. Uh, next, we're going to move on to Cowton, the Blues. And... Uh, Look, this, this one was a little bit tougher for me, but I think they do have to go into the flag contenders. 
um, tier for, for next year. Um, just with what they showed in the back end of last year, how they performed towards the end when they finally seemed to put it all together, I think that's a baseline for them to start this year. Um, look, I did originally want to put them in the finals or bust tier, given that Michael Voss is under pretty big pressure to perform with this list. Um, but I think they're going to be better than most of the other teams in that bracket and should be looking for a top four finish. Uh, my only concern with the Blues... Look, the gap between their best and their worst is probably the worst out of all the clubs that are going to be in this tier. But I think if they can get that sorted and just get, you know, consistency of performance, there's no reason why they will not be battling it out for a top four spot again this year. Uh, next one, pretty straightforward again. Uh, Collingwood, ugh. Flag contenders. I mean, pretty simple. Flag contenders for sure. They're, they're a fantastic side, and I think anything other than a spot in the granny will be a letdown for them. Um, you know, they won last year. They were the best team in it. They're still young-ish in, 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 in some aspects, but they do have some older blokes as well. Um, but yeah, look, I think they're the number one seeds. They have to be. They won it last year, right? Pretty simple. All right. Uh, also, you know, Craig McRae, he's the Ted Lasso of the AFL. Um, he's got the players, he's got the buy-in from the players, and he's got the system to win games. So, yeah, I just, I can't see any excuses for the Magpies to not be contending for a flag again in 2024. Uh, next, we have the Essendon Bombers. Now, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Bombers are going to be... My first team in the Nowhere Man tier, uh, or the Nowhere Men tier. Uh, look, yes, they have brought in some great names in the offseason. Ben Mackay, uh, Xavier Dersma, and, and to a lesser extent, probably Jay Gresham. Uh, but I, found, I actually found the Bombers super hard to rank. I feel like if everything went right for them, they could finish 8th or ninth and really move up for that fighting for the 8th tier. But, but I don't know. Realistically, I can see them finishing 10 to 14th bracket. Uh, and that kind of, to me, lands you in the Nowhere Men tier. Um... Whilst I was sort of looking around, researching everyone's sort of teams, you know, <laughs> researching, I was looking at some pretty pretty basic stats, to be honest. But uh, look, they're actually a younger list than I thought they were. Uh, and one thing I had sort of forgotten from this year, they were fifth on the ladder in round 17. So I don't know. I feel like this is the one that could come back and bite me pretty hard. They could make the eight. They could be a lot better. But for me, I just think the teams around Essendon are going to improve a bit more than Essendon will uh, but look, so that's why they are in the nowhere men tier. Screenshot it. Send me your abuse at the end of the year, Essendon fans, when they uh, when they make the eight and prove me very wrong. Uh, next, we're going to move on to Fremantle. Uh, look, a very disappointing year from Freo last year, and that's not just coming from me being a West Coast fan. Uh, they were fantastic in 2022, and in 2023, they just couldn't seem to get it together. Um, you know, look, that being said, I think we'll see somewhat of a resurgence from Frio in 2024. Um, so I'm actually going to put them fighting for the eight. I don't think they're a finals or bust because I don't think many people really expect them to, I guess, make the finals and improve that much. Um, but I think the natural progression and stuff of Fremantle means they should be fighting it out for the eight. I mean, look, they did lose some players this offseason, uh, guys like Schultz and Henry. Um, I think Jeremy Sharp will be a great pickup for them and will probably be fighting it out with Neil Erasmus for that vacant win spot left by Liam Henry. I hope Sharp gets it, mainly for my uh, fantasy team. Um, but yeah, look, I think he should he should get it, I, I assume. I think he'll be a great inclusion for them. I think we should see an improved output from Luke Jackson, guys like Jai Amos, Michael Johnson, uh, Erasmus, as I meant, and even um, Cyclone Tracy. Um, I mean, and Brayshaw and Sarong should get better as well. They're, they're, all, they're still such a young team. Um, I can see them getting better, and maybe the ne maybe next year, I think it might be finals or bust, and then the pressure really starts to come for J-Lo if they don't make it. Um, so, yeah, look, Frio, yeah, fighting for the eight for sure. Um, next up, we have Geelong. The cliff is coming, Cats. Um, I think it is just about time for the cliff. And I've been tipping the drop-off from Geelong for a couple of years, uh, and it seems that that sort of started last year. Um, look, I still think they have enough quality on the list to maybe push for finals. Um, but, you know, with an average age of 700 years old and not a heap of top-end young talent coming through, I'm actually going to put them down here with the Bombers in the Nowhere Man tier. I think this will probably also come back to buy me, and they might be in those sort of like 8 to 10 range, but I could probably see them finishing around that 11th sort of mark. I don't know. Um, there's no way they're a contender for the spoon, though. I don't I don't think they're that bad, and I don't think they're as bad as the teams they are going to be down there. They will probably end up being the highest-ranked team of this tier. 
Um, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if they scraped into the finals somehow. But uh, look, I do think that's more less likely than likely. So that is where I'm putting the cats for now. Um, next, we've got the Giants. Now, how good were the Giants last year? They, uh, Considering they lost to West Coast in round two, uh, to make a prelim, massive achievement by these guys. They... Uh, Look, I can't in good conscience put them as a genuine flag chance, but they should definitely be targeting finals for me. And another, uh, uh, sorry, another prelim appearance would probably set them to move into the flag contenders tier for next year. So let's put them up here. Finals or bust for me for the Giants. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. So I had COVID a couple of weeks ago, so I've still got this annoying little cough. So uh, you guys are just gonna have to deal with it. Um, COVID was absolutely horrible, by the way. Don't don't get it if you can help it. That was uh, that was not fun at all. Uh, anyways, that's enough. What was me about my life? Uh, next, we are moving on to. The Gold Coast Suns, uh, my second favorite team, five year member, just signed up again. Um, so look. I feel like <laughs> being a lifelong Suns fan, it's 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 a tough gig, right? So um, I feel like these guys could fit into any of the middle three tiers. They could be finals or bust, they could be fighting for the eight, and they could be nowhere men. But uh, there's so much unknown with the Suns this year. Um, you know, how is Dimmer's game plan going to translate to this list? And what changes has he made to the game plan since leaving Richmond? There's, there's just so much uncertainty. I think I have to sit on the fence a little bit here and put them in the fighting for the eight tier. Uh, this could be me being a bit optimistic as a Suns fan, but uh, look, I think if they can really work on their uh, consistency of performance and the gap between their best and worst, um, it's, I mean, it's probably some of the b worst in the comp, the, the, the gap. Like, it's probably one of the biggest gaps in best and worst in the, in the competition. Um, I feel like there's been a bit of a this-is-the-year mentality around the Suns uh, for a while now. But I think with the new coach coming in, I think we give them one season, one season's grace uh, under Dimmer to learn the new systems. But uh, but this time next year, if we do this video, they, should de they will definitely be in the finals or bust tier. Um, next up, we've got the Hawks. Now... This is probably going to annoy some Hawthorne fans, but uh, but I mean it with the best intentions, and they are going straight into the Nowhere Men tier. Um, now, I don't mean this as in their list is in a state of nowhere. You know, I don't mean this in the context of the list. I think the list is actually great. But uh, look, in terms of the 2024 season, look, I can't realistically say they're going to be pushing for finals. Um, I, I just don't see that happening, But I, and I definitely don't see them being down in the spoon contenders. Um, look, I think they'll win some games, but I think they'll lose more, and I, I think it's only due to the age demographic on their list. Definitely on the right trajectory, but still, I think, a year or two away from really being in a position to fight for a spot in the eight. Um, all right, so that does Hawthorne. Now we're going to move on to Melbourne. Oof. Uh, where do we start with Melbourne? Uh, feels like it's kind of been a bit of an off-season from hell for the Ds, um, or the Clary Oliver staff, and, you know, but look, they've still got... Oh, whoops, what have I done? Wrong button. Whoops. Sorry, don't mind me. Just, uh, just bumping stuff with my other hand. You know, doing that wog thing where I talk with my hands and start hitting stuff off tables and whatnot. Um, look, one thing about Melbourne is they still have a very good list with a lot of blokes in the prime, prime of their career. Uh, look, the question for me is, are they a genuine flag contender in 2024? And I'm going to say no. No, I don't think they are. I think I think they belong definitely in the finals or bust tier. Um, I feel like if they don't make finals this year, the pressure's really going to come for Goody. What does that, that mean for Clary Oliver and you know, what he's got going on? I mean, look, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but it seems like something's not 100% there. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, they'll be one of the highest ranked teams in this tier, though. I can see them finishing in that sort of fifth to sixth sort of bracket um you know i just i just don't i don't see them making a legitimate run for the flag and i do think that if they don't make finals i think that could cost goody his job uh so they are definitely in the finals or bust tier for me um moving on next to the kangas um now look this may not be as obvious as some people think um, I don't know, maybe just North fans, but I still have them as genuine contenders for the Wooden Spoon. Um, yes, they have a huge amount of young talent on this list, and they will be a scary proposition in maybe three to four years um, if they can keep all this list together. Um, but this is not a tier for the next three or four years. This is a tier for next year, and I think there's still a lot of development that needs to happen with these players before we can say that they are genuinely not a contender for the Wooden Spoon. 
Um, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward, that one. Um, all right, next we're going to move on to the pair, the Port Adelaide pair. Uh, now, look, I was big on Port last year. Um, and, you know, look, I think other than bowing out in straight sets in the finals, they did approve me right. And I will think they will be right there again this year. Um, I've got them as genuine flag contenders. Um, I think with the age of the list, the natural improvement from guys like Butters, Rosie, um, Jason Horn Francis, I think they um, uh, not dry. I think they recruited really well in the offseason with Asava, and they got a couple of good rucks in Soldo and Sweet. Uh, I think they've really addressed some uh, some needs. Um, you know, I think I think their young list will be better for the experience of last year, playing in some finals, um, and I think a prelim should be a minimum requirement for next year. Um, like I said. They've drafted well. They've brought in some great players. They've addressed some needs with the players they brought in. And uh, I think Port should definitely be a top four, maybe even a top two team come at the end of the year. Next, we're going to move on to Richmond. And uh, look, okay, <laughs> this one's going to ruffle some feathers, uh, mainly in my wife's feathers, who is a diehard Tigers fan. But uh, look, what goes up must come down. And I have Richmond fighting it out for the wooden spoon this year. Uh, look, I still have them above North, but I feel like, you know, Richmond are kind of like where the Eagles were a couple of years ago, you know, coming off a period of relatively sustained success. They were probably, they were much more successful than West Coast were, but uh, I feel like, yeah, that, they've got an aging list now. They're going to have a huge amount of talent in that sort of 21 to 25 age bracket. A bit like, these are the things people were saying about West Coast a couple of years ago. Um, Jack Rewalt, Trent Cochin are now gone, so they've lost a huge amount of on-field leadership and experience. And just look, with a new coach and a new game plan, I think we'll see the Tigers slide right down this year. Um, look, three flags though, totally worth it, right? Totally worth it. Uh, next, we have St. Kilda. Uh, now, this one's pretty tough, to be honest. Um, a lot of people seem to be pretty sure that St. Kilda are going to slide a long way down uh, the ladder this uh, next year, sorry. Um, and probably not making the eight. But, uh, but look, I think they'll be in the conversation for finals. I'm going to put them in the fighting for the eight tier. Um, look, second year under Ross the Boss, uh, we know Ross Lyon coach teams are hard to score against, hard to play against, and, you know, when it's hard for the oppo to score against you, it's hard to beat them. So, look, I can see them finishing in that sort of 8th to 11th range, so I think we can safely put them in the, uh, the fighting for the 8. I mean, they've still got a lot of, a lot of guys in that list who are in their prime, guys like... You know, Jack Steele, uh, Brad Crouch, you know, Rowan Marshall. You got Max King up forward. Um, they brought in a few guys. Um, I mean, they've lost a few fringe players. You know, you're sort of your, your Billings is one. Um, I can't remember. Uh, Gresham, the other. Um, Caulfield's another one. Um, but look, I still think the Saints will be okay. I think they'll be very sort of mid-tier next year. Um, all right, coming up next, we got the Swannies. Um, Sydney should be better than last year, I think. I think uh, they sort of had that little. I think last year was maybe a a one step for one step backwards th uh, coming into a three step forwards year. Jeez, I butchered that, didn't I? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, look, I can't see them missing finals. Are they a genuine flag chance? Probably, maybe. Uh, but I think I think I got to put them in the finals or bus category. I, I think they will definitely be the highest ranked team in this tier. Um, but there's things I want to sort of see first before I'm willing to declare them a genuine flag threat. Namely, the functionality of their forward line post Buddy. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch that unfold. I actually think it'll be better for them. Um, you know, I think we've seen there's been games where Buddy's missed where they don't target him as much, and therefore they're a little bit more unpredictable going forward. Um, look, they're also going to be without Callum Mills for a big chunk of the season. Um, but I do really expect Logan McDonald to really take the reins in the forward line. Um, I think he's going to be great there. And I think bringing in guys like Brody Grundy and Taylor Adams means that on the SCG ground, they're going to be extremely difficult to beat uh, and could end end up being 2024's Boston Celtics where they do not lose a game at home seemingly ever anymore. Um, look, they'll definitely win games on the road as well. And they'll probably, like I said, they will probably be the highest ranked team in this tier. Oh, I kind of do want to put them in the flag contenders, but I just, I just not going to, I'm just not going to. There you go. There we go. We've settled it. Um, all right. Moving on now to the not so mighty at the moment, West Coast Eagles. Um, all right. 
I'm putting it out there. I am an optimistic West Coast fan, but I think this is pretty straightforward. I think West Coast Eagles are definitely wooden spoon contenders. Um, I think there's, I think this is the only place we can put them, um, but I do think we're on the right path. I think we've made some huge off-field moves this season, uh, replacing our strength and conditioning guys. We've had, uh, you know, ongoing reviews of the training surface down at Lath Lane. Um, you know, we brought in Don Pike to take over the CEO's position. Um, you know, and we've also brought in some some player, some young guy called Harley Reid, who apparently goes all right. Um, but look, we are still a long way off. Um, the main thing I want to see from West Coast this year is, A, we got to get the injuries right. Um, there is no way we can do with another season of injuries like we had la la the last two years. Uh, and I'm really just looking, just really looking forward to seeing the development of all our young talent. we got the boy, Ruben Jinby, Elijah Hewitt, Brady Hoff, Ryan Marrick, Harley Reid, um, Campbell Chesser. Uh, there's a lot of young blokes that are, that are, I think, are you know, are going to be good, and it's going to be really fun for me personally as a West Coast fan to watch their development. Uh, I can see us winning five, six, maybe seven games. You know, if we can keep the senior guys like McGovern, Ryan, Cripps. Um, you know, if we can keep these sort of Tim Kelly, who quietly won our BF, BNF last year, um, if we can keep these guys fit, I think that'll go a long way to ensuring we are not taking the number one pick again next year. Um, I think the guys we brought in on the off season were good in Brockman and Flynn. I think Brockman is still so young that, you know, that it's going to be great to watch him develop. But I think Flynn really feels a need for us. Um, you know, it allows us to play Bailey Williams up forward. Um, and just quietly, the West Coast forward line is going to be really interesting this year. So, like, tools-wise, you've got Oscar Allen, Jack Darling, uh, Ryan Marrick, um, what's his name? Um, Jake Waterman. <laughs> How did I forget his name? Um, Jake Waterman. Um, and then you've got you got, you got the sort of the in-the-wings guys in Jack Williams and then the, the newer sort of Archer Reed type guys that we've just drafted this year. But then, like, you've also got Smalls, Noah Long, Tyler Brockman, Jamie Cripps, Liam Ryan. Uh, it's really going to be interesting to see how this forward line comes together come round one. Um, or round zero? No, no, we're round one. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I, I'm not expecting much, but, you know, I do think Eagles will, the Eagles will be improving next year. Okay, so our last team for today is the Western Bulldogs, and there is only one correct answer here, and it is finals or bust uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, but the main one is that there is just way too much talent on this list for them not to be playing finals. You've got a top probably two or three ruck in, in, in Tin English, two genuine key forwards in Norton and Eugle Hayden, one of the best midfields in the comp with Bont, Libba, Trelaw, and McRae. Um... You know, I mean, if McRae gets the mid-clock, I suppose. But, uh, you know, you've got great users off halfback with Bailey Dale and Ed Richards and even Caleb Daniel, if Bevo plays him there and, I don't know, not at fullback or the ruck or something stupid. Um, you know, I'd say I, I think there's an argument to be made that the Bulldogs are probably one of the most under-pressure clubs to perform in 2024, probably right up there with Melbourne. Um you know, I, I, I think I think the pressure on Bevo is going to be immense if they don't make finals next year. Um, I think I, I think their only real weakness in their list is probably uh, their key defender depth. Um, you know, Lockie Keefe and uh, what's his name, Liam Jones, are serviceable without being guns. But you know, they'll get the job done. Um, look, I think these guys should be playing finals. Um, I really do. Uh, there's, it, it, you know, look, we've got, what have we got? We've got nine teams in the finals or bust and flag contender. So one of these teams is going to have to drop out. But, um, you know, who knows? I, I just, I don't know. I think that the Bulldogs are just one of those teams that should be in the eight. Um, all right. So that winds us up for our tiers. But what we are going to do now is we're going to rank these tiers. And I will be putting a disclaimer on this saying this is all feeling and no facts. This is just full-blown gut feel of how I see these tiers sort of shaping out. And then, therefore, that will determine what uh, what my prediction for the 2024 AFL ladder will be. So we're going to start in the top tier, and we're going to rank these teams. Um, look, I think I think we have to have Collingwood at, at, at one, right? They've won the flag. They're the number one seed for next year. Um, I don't think there's any point being contrarian just for the sake of it. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, next, I'm going to go a little bit... Or maybe a little bit, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? This might be a bit of a stretch, but uh, I'm going to put Port in it too. Um, I think that they, they, I mean, they were sitting in, I think they were top two or three for most of last year. Disappointing in finals, but I think their young squad will be better for the run in finals. So we're going to leave those there. And we'll probably leave this as it is. I'm going to put Brizzy at three. Um, 
I don't think they can have another year where they just don't lose one game at home. Um, you know, is Lockie Neal going to back up his, uh, you know, Brownlow year? Uh, look, they'll be great, but I'm just going with my gut here, and that's where I've got them. I've got Carlton here as well. Um, all right, so that's your top four for next year. I think we got we got Collingwood, Port, Brisbane, and Carlton. Um, so yeah, I look, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, all right, moving on to the next tier, we've got the finals or bust tier. Uh, at number one, finishing fifth, I've got the Swans. I think that's pretty straightforward. I honestly, I reckon you could swap Carlton and Swans over, and no one would really bat an eyelid. I think that's about where they will finish. Um, next, I've got the D's. Um, look, I just. <laughs> I feel like they haven't gotten too much worse, but I just think maybe a couple of other teams have gone past them. So I've got them finishing, what's that, sixth. Um, you know, I think I think that's about right. Crows, I think we'll leave there. This is a really tough choice for me because I feel like the Giants did overachieve last year, but they still performed really well. And I think the Dogs are probably, probably the better team. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to put the Dogs in at eighth over the Giants. I feel like a bit like the Swans and Blues thing. I feel like this could go either way. But at this juncture, I have got the Giants finish in the finishing in the traditional Richmond spot of ninth and missing finals in 2024. Um, all right, moving on for fighting for the eight. Uh, now, obviously, look, we've put... <laughs> We've put nine teams in the top two tiers, but I still think that any of these three teams could jump in and snag a top eight spot. Maybe just eighth spot, though. I don't. I feel like the Bulldogs, Giants, Dockers, Suns, and Saints are probably all in that same little group where it might only be a game or a draw or percentage that separates them. So, look, I'm going to put the Saints first, uh, mainly because I think they're not going to get uh, they're not going to get absolutely decimated. Well, let's just move you that way. I don't think they're going to get absolutely decimated too many weeks, given that they are hard to score with. So they should have a pretty healthy percentage come season's end. Um, I think that uh, I think we'll probably you know what I'm going to put the Suns having a little bit of that new coach dimmer swag just pipping the dockers and uh we'll probably leave that and then and then that'll finish that tier off i can just see i don't know like i said it's all feelings no facts here i just feel like you know maybe there's a little bit of that new coach swag dimmer's gonna have the boys ready to go i think uh i think that'd be good and you know maybe it's also the west coast fan in me not having that much faith in frio <laughs> um, all right uh the next tier the nowhere men all right, cats. Cats at one. Cats at one. There's no way they're finishing bottom five. Um, I think they're going to be very hard to for average teams to beat at home, but I think the good sides will still pip them down at Cardinia. Um, I do think they're going to lose a few more games than they win this year. Um, and it's can, to be honest, it's kind of hard to believe I've got them finishing 14th at this point. To be honest, they could probably. Uh, I mean, maybe you could swap them over with a free or something. But no. This is what we did. We're not gonna. Uh, we're not gonna mess around. Um, all right. What are we gonna do now? Um, I'm gonna put the Hawks next. Uh, I feel like there's just natural improvement coming. Um, I feel like there's a lot of young guys who are gonna get better. I'm. I think Josh Ward's just gonna just explode this year. Guys like Will Day, Jai Newcomb. You know, they're young rucks. Everyone's so young at Hawthorne. So I really feel like the only way for them to go is up. Um, the Jack Gunston thing was super weird, but I guess it's you know it's what's the word? It's sentimental. I get it. You know. Uh, and that leaves the Bombers finishing in the bottom four. Uh, look, <coughs> nowhere near finals. Definitely nowhere near winning a final. Um, again, Bombers fans, feel free to screenshot this me and send me your abuse at the end of the year when they probably make the eight or something. But I don't know. I just I just can't get excited about bom about the Bombers. You know, I just I don't know. Um, all right, the Spoon Contenders. Um, oh, how are we gonna do this? Um, Oh, call me an optimist, but I'm doing it. I'm putting West Coast at the top of this tier. I just don't think there is no way we can have a third year of a, such a hectic injury list. Um, I think if we can keep those experienced guys on the park, we're still not going to be a great team, but I think we'll sort of be the best of a bad bunch down here. Uh, next, I've got Richmond at 17. There's no way they're finishing on the bottom of the ladder. Um... It's crazy that that's where they've fallen to me. Um, but look, it is what it is. And I feel it's kind of where their list is at, you know? Um, and then next, we've just that just leaves North Melbourne on the bottom of the ladder again. Teflon snake, get at me. Um, uh, look, North fans, your time will come, but it is definitely not next year. Um, 
I can see, I, like I said earlier, I can honestly see this team just exploding up the ladder in four to five years' times. And who knows? Maybe you'll be playing off against West Coast in a grand final in 2029. Um, but look, that's where I've got it. So uh, look, I guess we can walk through this now. And the 2024 ladder will look like this come season's end. Collingwood Magpies, a Port Adelaide pair, the Brisbane Lions and the Carlton Blues make up your top four, getting the double chance. Uh, the Swans, the Demons, the Crows and the Dogs are rounding out the finals with that uh, Crows-Demons matchup looking mighty tasty for an elimination final round one. Uh, round one of finals, obviously. Um, we got the Giants finishing in the traditional Richmond heartland of ninth. Uh, we got the Saints, the Gold Coast Suns at 11th, the Dockers at 12th, Cats down at 13th, Hawks at 14, Bombers starting the bottom four, and then West Coast, Richmond, and North Melbourne Kangaroos rounding it out for 2024. That is your 2024 ladder, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, feel free to screenshot it. We are going to definitely revisit this at the end of the year. Um, look, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I am going to try and do a little bit more just general footy content uh, over the next little while, maybe even dip into the fantasy content. I, uh, I have got a team which I may... I may or may not be working on a team reveal video for, um, I don't know, maybe maybe a bit later this week. We'll see how we go. But uh, but look, guys, uh, you know, a little bit of extra content for the channel. We might try and get back with some cards in the new year. Uh, I am maybe thinking about doing the Wemby chase. I don't know. I, do, I got a bit of sealed stock kicking around. We'll see what happens. But uh, thanks for tuning in, as always, guys. If I don't see you beforehand, have an extremely Merry Christmas and an extremely intoxicated New Year's. Have yourselves a good time. Be responsible. Don't do anything crazy. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Ta-da.